Welcome back, everyone. You got Danita with More Than Fitness, a podcast that we talk more than fitness. Today is an amazing topic about how Lexi was able to lose 100 pounds. She is a weight loss fighter, an eating disorder survivor, and a hopeful gym goer. She has a great story. I'm excited to bring her on. She's a mother of three. She's a wife, and she has lost 100 pounds in her journey. And I'm excited to bring her on today. And welcome to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness Podcast. Get your best booty and abs in 30 days with your own coach and home gym. Results or your money back. Studies show that 80% of women gain the weight back within 12 months. And this is because the weight loss industry is just focusing on that one size fits all solution rather than something that's more specific for just you. So not anymore because up here at bootybands.com, you're going to get your own coach, a women's home gym, and the highest quality nutrition that's going to create those lasting results. So let's get started. So welcome Lexi Sievers. Three tips for like a, a weight loss fighter would, would first be confidence, consistency, and forgiveness are big ones for me. Those are the biggest things that have really stood out in my entire journey through weight loss, especially starting, um, you know, when I first started my weight loss journey, I actually wasn't even overweight. Um, I was about 15 years old when I um, started having bulimia issues. And so um, with that, I um, actually began to gain weight because I would have issues and, um, and then I would stop and I would eat heavily. And so my eating disorder started before I gained weight and through the years began to gain weight. Um, I was able to overcome that eating disorder around the age of 19, um, which amazing. Um, and from there, I had my first child at 20 and the yo-yo dieting started. I mean, extreme. I, I don't feel like, um, at 20 years old, I probably should have tried diets as extreme as I did, but I did one ones like the HCG diet where you give yourself a shot every day. Um, and you're eating 600 calories. I mean, extreme. And of course you would lose weight as anyone would. And that was the route that I took. And it really was a roller coaster because that's not substantial for anyone's lifetime. And so from there, um, I would stop dieting and the weight gain would come back on, but, but with the weight gain, and this is something that I've learned now that, um, I feel like I've learned a new lifestyle, um, with each time that I gained weight, my self-sabotaging thoughts got worse and worse. And any time I was having a bad day, I blamed it on me being overweight. Um, and so I, I really lived in, um, in, a prison inside of myself for 10 years. Um, And I would lose weight, I would build a little bit of confidence and and it would never be sustainable. I would, these crash diets, they really just, they were never something that were going to be a sustainable lifestyle for me. Um, And I I wish I had learned um, that earlier on. Um, And so after about, five years of those types of diets, I learned about a friend that had gone down to Mexico and gotten weight loss surgery, um, the vertical sleeve gastrectomy. And so I thought about it. I went to the seminar. I learned about the surgery and I decided that um, I wasn't going to do it. This wasn't the right thing for me. I could lose the weight on my own. So I went to a weight loss clinic and I got put on Phentermine which is a um, appetite suppressor. It's actually very, very strong and very powerful. And it can be addicting as well, which is something that I was not made aware of before I started to take it. So for a year, I was on phenamine. I lost about 70 pounds. I was at a good, healthy weight. I was living on top of the world, felt amazing. Um, but I needed more and more phenamine. The tolerance builds up as you take it, as with most medications. 
Um, and I wanted to stop taking it because I was planning to get pregnant again. I wanted more kids um, and it wasn't a sustainable thing for me to be on for the rest of my life. And so as soon as I got off of it, instantly gained the weight back and more. All the 70 pounds plus more. Plus more. Wow. Plus more. Um, I got up to my highest of 225 pounds. Um, and at being 5'4", that put me in um, the BMI category of severely obese, close to morbidly obese. And once again, I went back into the yo-yo dieting. Um, I would lose some and I would gain it back and I would lose some and I would gain it back. So vicious, vicious cycle. Um, so I finally made the decision that I was going to go back to the weight loss clinic. I was going to talk to my doctor and see if this would be the right decision for me. Um, I did start going in while I was pregnant with my third child to these appointments. Um, and my doctor told me that I could have the surgery four weeks after I gave birth, which seemed wild to me because like six weeks is just the natural time that you wait just to go back to your OBGYN after your baby is born. Um, so I said, oh, let's push it four months. I think that'll give us enough time. So we um, went ahead, we scheduled the surgery. Um, at the time I was still nursing my baby, but I had planned to stop and I had stored all the milk that I would need and I was ready to move forward. My doctor told me my, my breast milk would dry up and I would be good to go. So surgery day came and went, the surgery went great. I went home, I was recovering just fine. Um, but about a week had gone by and with this surgery, they removed 70% of my stomach. So you are very limited at the start of this surgery on what you can eat. You are on a liquid diet, you are drinking tiny little sips, maybe a tablespoon at a time. Um, so getting in calories is difficult. So naturally we expected my, my milk to dry up. So a week had gone by and my milk had not dried up and I was still producing. So with that came like a negative calorie. I was losing weight too quickly, faster than expected. So by about a week, I was back in the hospital. I had pancreatitis, my kidneys were shutting down. Um, and they just were like, you need to eat more, but you can't eat more. So uh, we were in a really difficult spot. The way to feel, to, um, sorry, heal pancreatitis is to be on a good balanced diet. But that's not possible when you've just had this surgery. So. It was a battle there for about three months. I was in and out of the hospital. I actually got put on a feeding tube. And um, after that, I was able to recover quickly. Um, once they got my pancreas all under control and all my levels figured out, my vitamins, um, I, I healed. And that's really where I say my journey began. Um, starting fresh with a new stomach, um, had taught me that all of the struggles that I have had for the last 15 years were not because of my weight. I had been so hard on myself. I had beat myself up. I had abused my body for reasons that I blamed all on me being overweight. Um, I was losing weight. I was getting skinnier. I was starting to go to the gym. I was starting to get in shape. And I was learning that, oh my gosh, I am having a bad day and I can't blame it on my weight anymore. So that's where my journey to change my mind really began. And that is where the core of the change really needs to be, I think, to build a, a life that is gonna be 
long lasting. It's not going to be a yo-yo diet anymore, which I think so many of us can relate to and so many of us struggle with. We fought the fight for so long, so we just give up and we're just happy with being where we are. Um, I wish I had learned these things before I had surgery and maybe I could have done it without. Um, but I am so thankful that I did have this surgery because that's where I am today because of the choices that I made to get the surgery. Um, so now I tell people that I'm, that are on a similar journey to me that haven't had the surgery. The advice that I give them is starting with simple goals. We can't take things on all at once. That's, that's not realistic. And that's very much what yo-yo dieting is. They want you to do an extreme thing. And that's not going to be something that we can do consistently in our lifetime. So I, I tell my friends and I tell my family that this week, you just need to start with, with one good goal, whether that's upping your protein every meal and every snack or whether that's drinking more water, or whether that's getting in more steps, pick one this week and just go for it. My next biggest tip is consistency because my gosh, that has been the one thing that I have never done in my entire life is be consistent with something. Consistency is something that can be so difficult for us, but is actually one of the most simple things to do because once we make habits in our life it becomes natural for us to do it so as soon as you get through that hard period of making the habit you become consistent with something and it's after consistency that you're going to see change without it you can go to the gym for one week and you will not see change and then you quit there you go consistency over months and then I start to see changes but it's the habits that I make every day that bring joy to my life now I try to try to help my friends find happiness in just the little things I have friends right now that are battling with weight and I tell them man if I could go back and if I could talk to myself just eight months ago, because I'm only eight months post-op now, if I could go back and talk to myself, I would hug myself and tell myself to give yourself so much more grace, go out, be brave, try a class at the gym, go on a walk, soak up some sun, do things that make you happy. Um, I think finding confidence and finding joy in our lives. You don't have to wait until you've lost the weight. You don't have to wait until you're popular or fit or whatever stereotype you think you need to be in. You don't have to wait for those things to happen. You can wake up today just the way you are and you can be confident. You can be consistent and you can make the choices that are gonna make you happy in your life. Um, and so that's really, really the, the biggest lessons that I've learned through my journey and through losing 100 pounds is that the joy that I found in my life with being consistent and, and um, making lifestyle changes, those all could have happened at my higher weight. It's just I didn't allow myself to get there. And so I try to teach people that no matter where they are in life, they can always they can always get there. Um, make one small goal a week, crush it, do it the next week, but add another goal, crush it, and then add another goal. Um, do it at a pace that works for you. If you feel overwhelmed, do the best you can, and then get back on it the next day. Don't wait for Monday. Do it right now. You know, this is the life that we have, and yeah, that's a little about my journey. If you have any questions, I can oh, Lexi, answer. I we it. can. I absolutely in. love it. I mean, that's why, you know, listening to your story that day, I wanted to bring you on here because it is motivating. It's very inspirational. And there's women out there that need to hear this. And I'm excited to bring this today for those that can take the value and, and really start utilizing it in their life because you're 100% spot on. And it's not just 
what you're saying. This is actually scientifically proven. It's it's called rewiring your mind. It's neuroscience. Yes. It really is developing the connections within your mind to be able to stop searching for happiness, but to live in the happiness right here, right now. Yes. And that is that is beautiful how you're talking about the confidence to just don't be searching for confidence because you, you can be at your most fit self and never be confident. And I, I think that it was so amazing. You said that because when we're always in search, we'll always be in search of something that's always outside of us. Right. Um, and here's a perfect example. I was, I was a personal trainer in San Diego and there was a girl came up to me. I'll always remember her name. Her name was Yazzy. And she goes, Danita, I just want to get to the body that I was in high school. And I was like, okay. And I'm looking at her and she is hands down beautiful. I love her body. I love everything about her. Right. But in her mind, she doesn't find herself beautiful. Right. So I asked her a question. I said, Yazzie, when you were in high school with this perfect body, were you happy with that perfect body? What do you think her answer was? Nope. Nope. She desired to have something before or somebody else's body or whatever. Right. So she's constantly searching for something that's like the carrot in front of you that you're, you're constantly running towards. And when do you stop and really just have that confidence and that appreciation, that grace for yourself to go, you know what? I am going to get there. I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to visualize my goal ahead of me. And that's going to give me my confidence. And that's going to create the skill and the consistency I need. But right here in this moment, I'm going to visualize my goal, but give myself that grace and allow myself the time now that it takes to get me there. Because you nailed it. What happens is we get in these loops and you, you nailed it with by saying that it comes from the mindset. It has nothing to do with the weight. The weight is the after effect. Really the key component there is the mindset. It goes, the mindset is, which is thinking. What do you think? And then goes into the emotions of how do you feel goes into, oh, that pit, that empty void leads into immediate gratification because you don't want to stay in that emptiness anymore, which leads into actions, which creates this vicious cycle that I teach women. And I love that you're also signifying that. So go ahead. You're nodding your head. So what comes up for you? Yeah, it really is that, that vicious cycle. And, um, we start with, you know, this self-doubt and comparison and we feel better with food and then we're upset that we're overweight and then we heal that with food and and all of these things in our minds that we think that we need to do to feel better or that we will be happy when this happens that's just not the reality of it because happiness has to be created confidence has to be created and all of that comes with the consistency that is so difficult for us to stick to because we work hard for a week or even a month and the results aren't going to be there. I mean, we have to understand that these changes that we make have to be for a lifetime and with time, those changes will come and you'll see them happen. Um, but finding the happiness in today and right now is what needs to be your very top priority. You have to find happiness in all stages of your life. You're wasting away the time that you have if you're if you're stuck, if you're stuck there. And I was stuck there for 10 years and I just want to help anyone that is stuck there to get out because it is so beautiful. And I promise you that with those little changes to become healthier, to become stronger, to free your mind of those self-sabotaging thoughts, once you get there, it is such a beautiful place to be. And um you know, I just, I love finding people through Instagram or through my friends, like uh, meeting you, Danita, and seeing your whole company and all of those things just excite me, empowering women and teaching us that we can love ourselves the way we are. I, I'm just so thankful for all the people that I've met along this journey and that I'm able to hopefully relate to others and help that help people feel that that they're not alone in this process and that you know reach out and find friends and people that that love you and that are there to support you and start your journey today you know it's never never too late to begin 
Yeah. Sometimes in our darkest moments, we find really what our gift is. Yes. And I think that's what you found, right? It's so beautiful to see that in 10 years of struggle, now, as you come out of it, you go, this is my biggest strength. It's, and it almost, um, it gives you that, that, that second life. In a way. Yes, it does. Yeah. It gives, it gives me purpose to hopefully help someone that felt the same way that I did. Yeah. So. And that's why I'm here too, because I can relate a lot to that. So thank you so much for sharing your journey. If somebody wants to go ahead and continue to follow your journey, where can they follow you at? So I share my life and process and everything, weight loss and fitness on my Instagram on VSG Lexi. Um, So it's VSG underscore Lexi, L-E-X-I-I. And yeah. Yeah, and I'll go ahead and I'll make sure to put that in the comments down below. So I'll make it simple for the uh, listeners. Just go ahead and uh, click on the description and then uh, scroll down to find Lexi. So thank you for that. Awesome. Well, Lexi, I would love to, um, you know, continue to keep doing something with each other. I mean, we obviously live in the same city. So wherever, whatever blossoms that way, an event, um, a, a retreat where you could come speak, I don't know what it is, but I would love to keep you in my back pocket and, and be able to keep sharing your story so it can help um, inspire someone else. Absolutely. I'm so excited that we're local together and we can keep, keep inspiring. <laughs> I agree. Absolutely. So Thanks for jumping on. Yes. Welcome back, everyone. You got Danita with More Than Fitness, a podcast that we talk more than fitness. Today is an amazing topic about how Lexi was able to lose 100 pounds. She is a weight loss fighter, an eating disorder survivor, and a hopeful gym goer. She has a great story. I'm excited to bring her on. She's a mother of three. She's a wife, and she has lost 100 pounds in her journey. And I'm excited to bring her on today. So welcome, Lexi Sievers. Awesome. Wrapping up, we hope that this left you with some valuable information that you can help with improving your mind, your body, and your life. Really, we're about helping you step into your best self, and that's why we do these weekly, so that we can hear from you and how it resonated. So go ahead and write us a review, and we will pick weekly giveaways on our unique booty bands to give away. So thank you guys so much for listening. It was awesome having you on. I'm very excited to leave your review. Make sure to hit subscribe so that you can get notified on any future podcasts that come out. And of course, join the community and join the app called Booty Bands and Barbells where you'll find us in the workouts, the meal plan, and of course, all the fun challenges. I'll see you soon and I'll see you in the workouts.